in us, O God, the Father, the Pantocrator, O Holy Trinity, have mercy in us, O Lord God, of hosts, be with us, for we have no help in our hardships and tribulations, but you, absolve, forgive, and remit, O God, our transgressions, those which you have committed willingly, and those which you have committed unwillingly, those which you have committed knowingly, and those which you have committed unknowingly, the hidden, the manifest, O Lord, forgive us for the sake of your holy name, which is called upon us, let it be according to your mercy, O Lord, and not according to our sins. Make us, O Lord, worthy to pray thankfully, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord, all those who pass us. Glory and honor, honor and glory to the all holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, peace and edification to the one only holy Catholic Apostolic Church of God. Amen. Remember, O oh Lord, those who have brought unto you these gifts, those on whose behalf they have been brought, and those by whom they have been brought. Give them all the heavenly reward. Pray for this holy and precious gifts, our sacrifices and those who have brought them. Lord, have mercy. Alleluia. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, save us, O Lord, straighten our ways. Blessed is he who comes in the name. Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Blessed be God, the Father, the Pantocrator. Amen. Blessed be His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. the Holy Father, one is the Holy Son, one is the Holy Spirit, Amen. Blessed be the Lord God forever, Amen. 
Praise the Lord, all you nations, praise Him, all you peoples, for His mercy is confirmed upon us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let us pray. Stand up for prayer. Peace be with Let us give thanks to the beneficent and merciful God, the Father of our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ. For he has covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us to himself, spared us, supported us, and have brought us to this hour. Let us also ask him, the Lord our God, the Pantocrator, to guard us in all pieces, holy day and all the day, a haze of our life. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. O Master, Lord God, the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for everything, concerning everything and in all things. For you have covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us yourselves, spared us, supported us, and have brought us in this hour. Pray that God may have mercy and put compassion on us. Hear us, help us, and accept supplications and prayers of His saints for that which is good on our behalf at all time, and make us worthy to partake of the communion of His holy and blessed mysteries for the remission of our sins. Lord, have mercy. Or we ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind, grant us complete this holy day and all the days of our life in all peace with your fear, all envy, all temptation, all the work of Satan, the counsel of the wicked men, and the rising up of enemies, hidden and manifest, take them away from us and from all your people. And from this table and from this holy church that is yours. <coughs> but those things which are good and profitable do provide for us. For it is you has given us the authority. Tread on serpents and scorpions. And upon all the power of the enemy. And lead us not into temptation but deliver so, us
Your servants, the ministers of this day, the priests, the deacons, the clergy, and all the people in my weakness, we absolve of the mouth of the All Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, mouth of the one only Holy Catholic Apostolic Church. From the mouth of the twelve apostles and from the mouth of Beholder of God, the evangelist Saint Mark, the holy apostle and martyr, the patriarch Saint Severus, our teacher, discourse Saint Athanasius, the apostolic Saint Peter, the holy martyr and archpriest, Saint John Chrysostom, Saint Cyril, Saint Basil, and Saint Gregory. And from the mouth of the 318 assembled at Nicaea, the 150 at Constantinople, and 200 at Ephesus. From the mouth of our honored Father, the Archpriest, Abba to others, the second from my own mouth, being the least for blessed and full of glory is your holy name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now at all times and unto each fall ages. Amen. Save the man and with your spirit. Through the prayers of 
behold, there are God in the evangelist. Mark the apostle, Lord, grant us the forgiveness of our sin. Through the prayers of the struggle bearer and martyr, say, more is the Theban, O Lord, grant us the forgiveness of our sins through the prayers of the bride of Christ, the righteous in the of our sin through the prayers of the saints of this day each one according to their names oh Lord grant us the forgiveness of our sins through their Of our honored Father, the Archbishop of Atawadroso, Lord, grant us the forgiveness of our sins. We worship you, O Christ, with your good Father and the Holy Spirit, for you have risen and saved us. Paul, the servant of our Lord Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, appointed to the gospel of God. Paul, the servant of our Lord Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, appointed to the apostle of God. A reading from the first epistle of our teacher, Paul, to the Corinthians. May his holy blessings be with us. Amen. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. Yet in the church, I would rather speak five words with my understanding, that I may teach others also, than 10,000 words in a tongue. Brethren, do not be children in understanding, however, in malice be babes. But in understanding be mature. In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips I will speak to this people. And yet for all that they will not hear me, says the Lord. Therefore tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. But prophesying is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. Therefore if the whole church comes together in one place, and all speak with tongues, and there comes in those who are uninformed or unbelievers, will they not say that you are out of your mind? But if all prophesy, and an unbeliever or an uninformed person comes in, he is convinced by all, he is convicted by all. And thus the secrets of his hearts are revealed. And so, falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is truly among you. The grace of God the Father be with you all. Amen. Catholic epistles from the epistle of our teacher, St. James, may his holy blessing be with us. Amen. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your mercies that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupt and your garments are moth heated. Your gold and silver are corroded and the corrosion which be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. We have heaped up treasure in the last days. Indeed, the wages of the laborers who move their, your fields, which you have kept back by fraud, cry out, and cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of Sabato. You have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. 
You have fattened your hearts as in a day of slaughter. You have condemned, you have murdered the just. He does not resist you. Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruits of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and later rain. You also be patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not love the world or the things in the world. The world is passing away and is lost, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Amen. Hail to you, Mary. of our fathers, the pure apostles, who are invested with the grace of the Holy Spirit. May their blessings be with us all. Amen. Now, after five days, Ananias the high priest came down with the elders and a certain orator named Tertullus. Ter These gave evidence to the governor against Paul. And when he was called upon, Tertullus began his accusation, saying, Seeing that through you we enjoy great peace and prosperity is being brought to this nation by your foresight. We accept it always and in all places, most noble Felix, with all thankfulness. Nevertheless, not to be tedious to you any further, I beg you to hear, by your courtesy, a few words from us. For we have found this man a plague, a creator of dissension among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. He even tried to profane the temple, and we seized him, and wanted to judge him according to our law. But the commander Lysias came by and with great violence took him out of our hands. Commanding his accusers to come to you, by examining him yourself you may ascertain all these things of which we accuse him. And the Jews also assented, maintaining that these were, things were so. The word of the Lord shall grow, multiply, be mighty, and be confirmed in the Holy Church of God. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Today is the 30th day of the blessed month of Epiphany. May God end it in goodness and renew it for us in peace and tranquility while our sins and iniquities are forgiven through the time of their mercy of our Lord, O my fathers, my brothers, and my sisters. Amen. On this day, two honorable saints, Macarius and Ephraim, were martyred. These two saints were born in Echmim and were brought up on a true Christian faith. When they grew up, they went to one of the monasteries nearby. They dwelt there for 20 years with the spirit of fellowship and love, persevering in fasting, prayer, asceticism, and reading the Holy Scripture. When the Arians incited persecution against the church, the followers of Arias entered the churches to offer the offering upon the altars of the Orthodox. These two saints rose up and cast aside the bread and wine which the Arians had laid on the altar and said, He who has not been baptized in the name of the Holy Trinity is only fit 
to offer up the offering on the altar of idols. The Arians seized the saints and beat them severely until they delivered up their souls and received the crown, the crowns of martyrdom. The blessing of their prayers be with us all and glory be to our God forever. Amen. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, who was born of the Virgin, have mercy upon us, holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, who was crucified for us, have mercy upon us, holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, who rose from the dead and ascended into the heaven, have mercy upon us, glory to the Father and to the Son. And to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of the ages, amen, O Holy Trinity, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. Stand up for prayer. Peace be with all. With your spirit, O oh, Master Lord Jesus Christ, our God, who said to his saintly and honored disciples and holy apostles, Many prophets and righteous men have desired to see the things which you see and have not seen them and to hear the things which you hear and have not heard them. But as for you, blessed are your eyes, for they see in your ears, for they hear. May we be worthy to hear and to act according to your holy gospels through the prayers of you, O Lord, saints. Pray for the holy gospel. Lord, have mercy. Remember also our Master, all those who have bidden us to remember them in our supplications and prayers, which we offer up unto you, O Lord our God. Those who have already fallen asleep, repose them. Those who are sick, heal them. For you are the life of us all, the salvation of us all, the hope of us all, the healing of us all, and the resurrection of us all. Alleluia. hear the holy gospel blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord of hosts bless O lord the reading of the holy gospel according to saint luke glory to you o lord stand fear of God and listen to the Holy Gospel, a reading from the Gospel according to our teacher, St. Luke the Evangelist. May his blessing be with us all. Amen. From the Psalms for teacher David the prophet and king, may his holy blessings be with us. Amen. I spread out my hands to you, 
My soul longs for you like a thirsty land. Answer me speedily, O Lord, my spirit fails. In the name of the Lord of hosts, our Lord, God, Savior, and King of us all, Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, to whom all the glory is due forever. And ever. The day began to wear away. The twelve came and said to him, Send the multitude away, that they may go into the surrounding towns and country, and lodge and get provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. But he said to them, You give them something to eat, and they said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we go and buy food for all these people. For there were about five thousand men. Then he said to his disciples, Make them sit down in groups of fifty. And they did so, and made them all sit down. Then he, look, then he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the multitude. So they all ate and were filled and twelve baskets of the leftover fragments were taken up by them. Glory be to God for In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of all ages. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Hopefully you're having a good, long weekend. You know, it's rare that the gospel, or the passage of the gospel, is the same gospel that is read in actually all three services that lead up to this service. So the, the Vesper service, so... Yesterday evening, we read the gospel and we heard the feeding of the 5,000. And then this morning in Madden's, we heard the same gospel, but from a different uh, evangelist. And then in the, in the um, liturgy, or the one that we just heard, we hear of the same gospel, again, the feeding of the 5,000. The feeding of the 5,000, uh, according to St. Luke. And this is such 
an amazing miracle, but it's not a miracle that we should just sit here and say, wow, this is a great miracle. Wow, you know, he fed 5,000 men plus 5,000 women and 5,000 children. So anywhere between 10 to 15,000 people that he fed with five loaves and two fish. There are definitely lessons that you and I need to learn from this particular um, this particular miracle. And this miracle is actually sandwiched between two powerful events. The first event or the top layer is that if you read a little bit earlier in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 9, you hear and you see the apostles and it says, and the apostles when they had returned told them all that they had done. What did they do and what was done through them? There was a lot of things that happened right before this miracle that the Lord sent out the disciples two by two and they went and they came back and they told him, Lord, we healed in your name and demons were cast out in your name. So there was a lot of things that happened before this particular um, miracle. And then this miracle happened and then after in the miracle, you see that later on, Jesus, it says in John chapter 6, and they said, so when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea, drawing near the boat, and they were afraid. Disciples, you just saw Jesus feed 5,000 people or 15,000 people from five loaves and two fish. And now that you see him walking on the water, you are afraid it's funny that the disciples suffered from this short-term memory That's it's something that you and I probably could relate to. I know I could. I could relate to this type of short-term memory of all the amazing things that God has done in my life and that God is doing in my life, yet I am still afraid in certain areas of my life. The gospel of today is about the feeding of the 5,000 and a lot of us are familiar with this familiar with it and maybe we're too familiar with it because we kind of tune out maybe when it comes to this particular gospel or this particular miracle why because we've heard it a million times we know the story we know the story that there was many people that were listening to Christ and they came and so forth and he was sitting there and preaching to them and so forth Yet, there's definitely lessons in that he fed them with barely five loaves and two fish. With just five loaves and two fish, they were all filled. There are definitely lessons that you and I need to, to learn from this. Remember that Jesus walked on earth for three years in his public ministry. And everything that he did, he was teaching his disciples how to be great leaders. He was teaching the disciples how they ought to depend on him. Everything he taught, every miracle he worked, he knew that this would leave an impact on the disciples and that it should leave an impact on you and I as well. You know, look what happened even right before this miracle occurred. In Verses 12 and 13, it says, When the day began to wear away, the twelve came to him saying, Send the multitude away that they may go into the surrounding towns and country and lodge and get provision. For we are in a deserted place here. The miracle hasn't happened yet. 13, he says, But, you say, but he said to them, You give them something to eat. And they answered and they said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish unless we go and buy and food for all of these people. In John chapter 6, where, where we hear this, gospel, uh, this miracle as well, it says, Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming towards them, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him. For he himself knew what he would do. It is clear from the beginning that Jesus was using this miracle to teach the disciples something. It's clear that this, Jesus was using this miracle to teach us also about something. You know, from the accounts of the other evangelists, it's interesting to see, you know, that the disciples were talking about this problem before facing, you know, 
uh, Jesus or even before like they were they were just talking about the problem they were concerned about the people I could just imagine the disciples at this point that the disciples Jesus is standing and preaching to the 5,000 and he saw multitudes of people and he is preaching and the day is going on and it's a long long day and they are hungry and I bet you Jesus out of his humor he's probably teaching about bread of life and about water and about water wine into water and he's teaching all these things that like kind of like making their mouths water and the disciples are probably sitting on the side like Jesus come on like maybe you should preach about something else don't make the people think about food because we are in a deserted place here maybe you should just you know stop preaching about bread and about water and about food teach about something else yet he goes to Philip in this pop quiz and he tells him Philip where are we going to find enough food for all of these people? Where are we going to find enough food for all these people? The disciples didn't know that they were about to see one of the most memorable miracles that they could uh, carry in their heart. They didn't know, but they knew that they were going to learn a lesson from this. And one of the lessons that you and I should learn this morning is that we shouldn't measure. It's called the yardstick lesson don't measure a problem or a challenge according to your own ability this is what the disciples did when peter came when philip was asked where what are we going to do to feed these people he told them like we can't find enough food like he was measuring it with his own ability he limited god and he said there's not enough food. And even in one of the Gospels, it says, even if we had X amount of money, we would not be able to buy enough food to feed all these people. Don't measure it according to your own ability. That's the wrong measuring stick. A lot of times when we use the wrong measuring method, we get discouraged. When I say we're going from, I don't know, if I tell my kids from here we're going to I don't know if we're going to a trip to Ottawa or Montreal or wherever we're going and they say okay and they're like how far is Ottawa from here and I tell them it's I don't know one million five hundred thousand seconds it's going to take us that long to get there it's a little bit discouraging because I'm using the wrong metrics I'm using the wrong measure I'm using se seconds when I should be using hours. It's much easier to say it's going to take happy week. It's going to take us three hours. Don't worry, it's not. But those numbers are discouraging. When we measure things with the wrong measuring stick, we become discouraged. It's the same thing. The disciples used the wrong stick, the wrong measuring tool. They measured things according to their own ability. Any time you face a problem or a challenge and you feel small next to the problem, there will be no way that you will be able to overcome that problem unless you go back and you say that I believe in a big God. The world today needs Christians that believe in a big God. You know, one of the things that Father Bishoy always taught me, and when he sits with me, he tells me, he's like, tell me your dream or dream big. And, you know, like, we know when, you, when you're partnered with somebody that's a visionary, it's, it's hard. Because, like, visionaries, like, see, like, 10 years ahead of time. Like, for people like myself, no, I don't see 10 years ahead of time. So when he says, like, okay, dream big. You know, he is so dependent on a, on a big God. And that's what he's saying. Because he's measuring with the right stick. He's not limiting things to our own ability. That's what we do. We do a lot of times in circumstances, we face problems and we say that this problem is impossible. Philip replied, it would take a small fortune to feed all of them. He looked at Jesus and says, what are you talking about? This question that you're asking me about feeding the 5,000. What are you talking about? I can't imagine like if I was in Philip's spot, what I would have said. Like, I don't know. Like what I was said, like if somebody came to me and said, okay, today you're going to feed all these people. God bless our kitchen ministry. Every, every week they feed, you know, five, six hundred people. I don't know how they do it. But I look out and I say, okay, if we're going to feed, you're going to ask me to go feed 500 people. My first thing is I'm calling Amira. I'm like, you deal with this because this is not my department. But Philip, what did he do? 
Philip kind of just said like, no, there's not enough money. There's not enough resources. My abilities are not enough for this. I don't know how we're going to solve this. Basically, he was put in an impossible situation. He looked around. He saw 5,000 men. He saw probably 5,000 women and another 5,000 children and said, that's 15,000 people. There is, this is an impossibility to feed this. But you and I have to remember one thing, that Jesus loves impossible situations. He's God. Impossible circumstances don't bother him. Can you imagine that if they came to Jesus at the time and said, the people are hungry, and Jesus started to pace back and forth and bite his fingernails because he was nervous because he didn't know what he was going to do? Of course not. An impossible situation for God is not an imp There is no impossibilities for God. He loves impossible situation. Jesus is the one we have to remember that he healed the woman after being sick for 12 years. She probably tried every single doctor in that town and yet she wasn't healed. Impossible situation in her mind, but yet she was healed. He was the one that healed the man that was sick for 38 years. 38 years that he was crippled and so forth. It seemed like an impossibility. I don't know about you, but if I was waiting for healing for 38 years, I probably would have given up after eight years. <laughs> I don't know. What, it, what, like, I would have said, okay, it's impossible to be healed at this point. 38 years, an impossible situation that turned possible because of Jesus was in the situation. He loves impossible situations. Some of us right now may be sitting in that we feel that we are in impossible situations. That maybe, you know, I have a relationship that is going a little bit south right now. And I feel that it's an impossible situation. Or maybe it's more on a personal level. I feel like I can't forgive this, this person. Why? Because this person's not nice. And this person is evil. And this person, whatever it is. I feel this is an impossible situation. You're asking me to do something impossible. Maybe we, we're in a, you know, it's in our family, our personal life, our business. There's an impossible. It's impossible for me to be the husband and the father that you call me and you want me to be. It's impossible for me to be the wife and the mother to these children that you want me to be. At least with this husband that you have given me. You know, we think that these are all impossible situations. My parents are impossible to deal with. My parents are impossible to deal with. All of these impossibilities are not impossible when it comes to Jesus. He provides, impossibilities will provide the perfect test. Jesus did test Philip. He tested the disciples. Jesus allowed his disciples, you know, to go through a certain struggle. And what was happening was that a miracle was going to happen. But mark my words, that Jesus didn't test his disciples to grade them. Jesus tested his disciples and he puts us through tests, not because he wants to grade us, but because he wants to grow us. A lot of us, when, Jesus, when God tests us, it's not to grade us, it's to grow us. God tests us to grow us, not in the ways that you and I think. There's a video that we'll play. Bono, do you have that video? Right. We'll play a little video that I just want to show you about uh, little tests here and there. It's, it's from the Lion King. And this popped up actually just, I'm going to say randomly, it popped up on my, uh, uh, my Instagram. But now you know what I search for in Instagram is Lion King. Um, but it's so important for us to understand that, that God doesn't allow impossible situations in our life in order to grade us. Did you pass this test? You know, most of our life is about that. Our students go through high school and university and it, they do tests and it's, did you pass the test? That's what we ask them and that's the normal question. But when God puts us through a test, when God puts an impossibility in our life, then you and I are able to not just pass the test, we are to grow out of this test. And a lot of times we look at our past and we say that I have done something in my past and that is an impossibility for me to recover from. 
but it's important for us to learn from our past. Let's watch this video for a second. What was that? <laughs> the weather. <laughs> Very peculiar, don't you think? Yeah. Looks like the winds are changing. Ah, uh, change is good. Yeah, but it's not easy. I know what I have to do, but going back means I'll have to face my past. I've been running from it for so long. Ow! Jeez, what was that for? It doesn't matter! It's in the past! <laughs> yeah, but it still hurts. Oh yes, the past can hurt. But the way I see it, you can either run from it, or learn from it. Ah! You see? So what are you going to do? First, I'm gonna take your stick. No, 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 no! Not a All right. stick! Hey! Where are you? I, I love this video because it does show us something. We hold on to the past so much, and this video is such a simple video that tells us that you could either let your past to continue to hurt you, or you could let your past become a learning place for you and I. God puts us in impossible situations to help us change. Everything about the church, everything that we do in church, everything that we do in our own spiritual life should bring us to a place of transformation. It should bring us to a place of change. God puts us in impossible situations to stretch our undeveloped faith. A lot of times we need that. We need that. And sometimes it's a prayer that, you know, you and I don't want. We pray a lot of times, Lord, you know, don't put me in this situation. I would rather pray the prayer, Lord, put me in the situation that is impossible and show me your hand. It's important for us to understand that if an impossible situation that you're in right now, or there's a feeling of something that you can't do, then be okay with that and wait and see how God will remove that obstacle. There are certain things that seem to be impossible in our life, that a certain, you know, direction or a path that your life, you know, should I be going down this path or not? And it seems like there's impossibilities or there are obstacles. Those obstacles, when they are removed, know that they are from the hand of God. That they are from God's hand. God puts us in impossible situations to stretch out our undeveloped faith. God also puts us into these impossible situations to strengthen our eternal hope. All of a sudden, we're not just looking at the world anymore and the things that we're holding on to. We realize that there's a little bit more. Philip, for sure, after this miracle, if the Lord asked them again, where should we buy food for all these people? The second time of their, when they're going to feed people, let's say, I'm sure he did feed other multitudes. He didn't answer, we don't have enough money to buy all these food. For sure not. At this point, he knew that there was something more. That there's something more. That I no longer have to just look at what I could physically touch. But that there is something greater and something more. Impossible situations strengthen our eternal hope. That you and I sometimes are placed and we're living life here. And we get into a place of despair. That, you know, is it worth continuing down the path and the struggle that we have should I continue to struggle with this addiction to fight against the addiction or not? Should I continue to fight against the shortcoming or not? Should I actually get out of my comfort zone or not? When you and I start to look at things that are eternal, then the answer is yes. Of course it's worth it. Of course it's worth it for me to step on my pride and to go and ask for forgiveness or to forgive someone. Of course this is the right thing for you and I to do. God puts us in impossible situations to also show us his incredible love. He could have easily sent the multitude away. He could have easily said, send the multitude away. That's what the disciples were saying. Send the multitude away. He could have said, yes, okay, let's send them away. Instead of sending them uh, in groups of 50, he could have said, okay, start sending them in groups of 50 away. But he didn't say that. He said, you give them something to eat. Why? Because of his incredible love and compassion for his children. We need to stop measuring our problems and our challenges according to our own ability. 
you know, we need to think about the impossible situations that you and I are facing right now. And I would challenge you to go home and write down what are you saying is impossible. Are you saying that this reconciliation with this particular person is impossible? Write it down. And then write down the things that you can't do. And there are things that you and I know that we can't do. There are things that you and I know. We can't go and if I'm having an argument with someone, I know that I can't change their mind. They have to do that on their own. There are certain things that you and I can't do. But there are 30 certain things that you and I can do. And these are simple things. And a lot of times we glance over the simple in our life and we feel like there has to be an overcomplicated solution to my problem or to this impossibility. You know, I heard one time, the strongest prayer is sometimes the shortest prayer. The shortest prayer. Why don't we get on our knees and say, Lord, here's the situation. God help me. That's it. Why do we have to overcomplicate it and say, you know, a whole essay about how, God, I need you to help me. He knows what kind of help you need. He knows what kind of help I need. You know, there's a story about the perfect pot roast. I don't know if you heard this story, but the perfect pot roast, they were saying they gave it to a bunch. Of, I don't know if this is actually a real story or not, but anyways, there's a good illustration. And it was saying that there was a group of engineers that were given the problem, and the problem was cook the, the perfect pot roast. And apparently the perfect pot roast is, is that you have to get the internal temperature to 150. So they, they're like... The problem that was given is like, here's a three pound pot roast, cook this pot roast to perfection. So different groups of engineers, of course, started different things uh, to do. They all started to do different things. One kid uh, did a series of experiments. So he bought a bunch of pot roasts and he kind of like just measured the temperature and he put the pot roast in the oven and then he put a thermometer and the watch and whatever another one got a spreadsheet and did all these mathematical calculations and said okay my pot roast is three pounds or whatever uh my temperature is this and he started some some sort of calculation and then there's one kid that just said i have the solution and he picked up the phone and he called his mom he's like mom how do we cook the perfect pot roast and sometimes that's what it is Sometimes the most important answer or the biggest questions to life are not answered logically. They're answered relationally. And that's why it's so important for us to be a part of a community. I was speaking with Amira, we were speaking um, like this past week, and we we're talking about the blessed or the blessings that we have to be a part of a community. I don't think we understand those of us that are sitting here the blessing that we have to be a part of a community. There are many people, and think of it. Think of your neighbors. Think of uh, people at your work. They're not a part of a community sometimes. They just live their life on their own. They go to work, and they come home. They don't really mingle, and they don't really like have a community that they could you know, come back and fall on and look for support and so forth. A community where they could just ask and say, hey, how do I cook a pot roast? Some people don't have that. We take this for granted that we have such a wonderful community, a wonderful family that you and I should be attached to at all times. We don't have to figure out things every time logically. Relationally is what is important. That type of connection with God is what we need. Don't try and connect to God on a logical level. Try and connect to God on a relational level. Stay connected with Him through adequate prayer or through time of prayer and through like an intentionality. I know I, I said this before and Father Bishoy said this to me when, when, we, when we were going to Zambia. He said, you're going to speak about Zambia for at least two to three years after you, know, you come back from Zambia. And it's true, it's two years now and I'm st it's still like on my heart and there are small things and maybe I'm not explaining all the situations that happened in Zambia but one of the things that and the lessons that we learned was about being intentional in our relationship with God waking up in the morning being intentional in Zambia we used to wake up at 6 30 or 7 o'clock for the purpose of spending quiet time spending time with God 
I haven't done that since I got back from Zambia. Maybe I've done it a few times, but I, like I'm confessing, like I haven't done that because a lot of times now I set my alarm. I set my alarm for 7.30. I have to be at church at 8.30. I know that it takes me an hour to get ready. I know this. I, well, not an hour to get ready, like, like a half hour to get dressed and a half hour to drive here. So it takes me an hour in order from my door to door. So I set my alarm at 7.30. Why? To get on with my day. Not with the intention of being with God, but to get on with my day. We need to have a true relationship with God. Pope Shenouda of blessed memory, he says, If you pray, if you love, if you suffer, then you are a human being. But if you pray for those who mistreat you, and persecute you, love the ones who hate you, and endure hardship with patience and hope, then you are a human being in whom Christ dwells. That's the type of human being that you and I want to be. You and I want to be this. This human being that loves and prays and endures hardship with patience and hope. And we pray for those that hate us. And we, you know, we forgive those that have wronged us. And all of these things. Why? Because we want to be human beings in whom Christ dwells. But that seems like an impossibility. To love those who hate you. And to bless those who curse you. That seems like an impossibility. But we're okay with impossibilities. Why? Because we don't measure with our own stick. We don't measure with the wrong yardstick. We measure the stick according to God's ability. Today you, we see this simple lesson. That when he came to the disciples and said, where are we going to buy food for this? They quickly went and they just evaluated things according to their own ability. But today the Lord is saying, stop calculating the impossibilities in your life with your own ability, but calculate it according to God's ability. Our problems might be big, but they are small beside our big God. The world today needs Christians that believe in a big God. That we may say many things are happening in the world right now, but we don't have enough that we don't have enough to change or to affect. What is a small community like this in such a big world? It doesn't matter. The five loaves and the two fish indicate to us that little in God's hands is much in, in the world. Is much in all our problems. So today, let's not measure things with our own ability, but let's remember that we truly worship a big God, a big God that has a big heart and that loves us truly from the depth of his heart. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Are they in truth the sins of this day, each one according to their name, the beloved of Dove Christ, intercede on our behalf, O Lady of us all, the Theotokos, Mary, the mother of our Savior, that he may forgive us our sins. Blessed be the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the perfect Trinity, we worship Him and glorify Him. In the wisdom of the Lord God, let us attend, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, truly. We believe in one God, God the Father, the Pantocrator, Creator of heaven and earth and of all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten not created, of one essence with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary and became men. And he was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, suffered and was buried. And on the third day he rose from the dead, according to the scriptures, ascending to the heavens. He sits at the right hand of his Father, and he is coming again in his glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. Yes, we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets and in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, 
We confess on baptism for the remission of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Amen. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Amen. I have sinned. Please pray for me and forgive me. Let us pray. Stand up for prayer. Please be with all. And with your spirit. O oh God, the great the eternal who for men in incorruption and death which entered into the world through the envy of the devil you have destroyed by the life-giving manifestation of your only begotten son our lord god and savior jesus christ you have filled the earth with the heavenly peace by which those of angels glorify you saying Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth and goodwill toward men. Pray for perfect peace, love, and the holy apostolic kisses. Lord, with your peace, cleanse us from all blemish, all guile, all hypocrisy, all craftiness and the remembrance of evil entailing death, and make us all worthy our master to greet one another with a holy kiss, that without casting into condemnation we may partake of your mortal and heavenly gifts, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen one another with the holy kiss lord have mercy lord have mercy lord have mercy yeah lord who are jesus christ the son of god hear us and have mercy upon us offer in order stand with trembling look towards the east let us attend through the intercessions of the theotokos saint mary o lord grant us the forgiveness of our sins we worship you o christ with your God. Father and the Holy Spirit, for you have risen and saved us, a mercy of peace, a sacrifice of Meet 
and right. O you, the being, Master, Lord, God of truth, being before the ages and reigning forever, who dwells in the highest and looks upon the lowly, who has created the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all that is there, Heir and the Father of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, by whom you have created all things visible and invisible, who sits upon the throne of his glory and who is worshipped by all the holy powers. You are seated stand. before whom stand the angels, the archangels, the principalities, the authorities, the thrones, the dominions, and the powers. Look towards the east. You are here and whom stand the cherubim full of eyes and the seraphim with six wings. Praising continuously without ceasing, saying, Let us attend the cherubim worship you, and the seraphim glorify you, proclaiming and saying, and placed us in the paradise of joy. When we disobeyed your commandment by the deceit of the serpent, we fell from eternal life and were exiled from the paradise of joy. You have not abandoned us us to the end, but have always visited us through your holy prophets. And in the last days you did manifest yourself to us who were sitting in darkness and the shadow of death through your only begotten Son, our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who of the Holy Spirit and of the Holy Virgin Mary. salvation 
He granted us the birth from on high through water and spirit. He made us unto himself an assembled people and sanctified us by your whole Holy Spirit. He loved his own who were in the world and as a ransom on our behalf gave himself up unto death which reigned over us whereby we were bound and sold on account of our sins he descended into Hades through the uh, cross. Amen. I ascended into the heavens and sat at your right hand O father he has appointed a day for recompense on which he will appear to judge the world in righteousness and give each one according to it is the according to your mercy, O Lord, and not according to our sins. Instituted for us this great mystery of godliness. For being determined to give himself up for the life of the uh, uh, world. We believe. He took bread into his holy head. Hands which are without spot or blemish, blessed and life giving. We believe that this is true. Amen. towards heaven to you, O God, who art Father and Master of everyone and when he had given thanks. Amen. He blessed it. Amen. He sanctified it. disciples and only apostles saying take heed of it all of you for this is my body which is broken for you and for many to be given for the remission of sins this do in remembrance of me this is true So the cup after supper, mix it of wine and water, and when he had given thanks, Amen. he blessed it, Amen. he sanctified it. And given all 
also to his own only disciples and saintly apostles, saying, Take, drink of it all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many to be given for the remission of sins this do in remembrance of me. This is also true cup you proclaim my death confess my resurrection and remember me till I come Amen 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 your death O Lord we proclaim your holy resurrection Into the heavens we confess, we praise you, we bless you, we thank you, O Lord, and we entreat you, O our. His resurrection from the dead is ascension into the heavens. His sitting at your right hand, O Father, and His second coming from the heavens. Awesome and full of glory, we offer unto you your gifts from what is yours. For everything concerning everything and in everything. Worship God in fear and trembling. We praise you, we bless you, we serve you, we worship you. Let us attend. This bread he makes into his holy body. I believe. And this cup also the precious blood of his new covenant. Again I believe. Amen. Even for the remission of sins and eternal life to those who partake of Him. And Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Yes, we ask you, O Christ, our God, confirm the foundation of the church. Lord of mercy, the oneness of heart that is of love, may it take root in us. May the righteousness of faith Straighten, grow, straighten for us the way of godliness. Lord have mercy. 
mercy control the shepherds and those whom the shepherd comfort give splendor to the clergy asceticism to the monks and nuns Lord have mercy purity to those in celibacy a life of goodness to those in wedlock mercy to those in repentance goodness to the rich Lord have mercy meekness to the honorable help to the poor strength in the elders chast in the young Lord have mercy restore the unbelievers may the schisms of the church cease rip the vanity of the heretics and count us all in the unity of godliness lord have mercy lord have mercy lord have mercy make us all worthy our master to partake of your holies unto the purification of our souls bodies and spirit that we may become one body and one spirit may have a share an inheritance with all the saints who have pleased you since the beginning. Remember, O Lord, the peace of your one only holy Catholic Apostle Church. Lord have mercy. This which you have acquired to yourself with the precious blood of your Christ keeper and peace with all the Orthodox bishops who are in her foremost. Remember, O Lord, our blessed and honored Father, the Archbishop, our Patriarch, Abba Tawadros de Second. Lord, have Divide the word of truth with them. Grant them unto your holy church to shepherd your flock in peace. Remember, O Lord, the Orthodox Hegemons, priest, and the Ekans. Lord, have And all the servants and all who are in celibacy in the purity of all your faithful people, remember, O Lord, to have mercy upon us all. Have mercy upon us, O God the Father, the Pantograto. The salvation of this your holy place in every place and every monastery of our Orthodox fathers. Lord have mercy. And those who dwell therein in God's faith graciously accord the Lord 
The air of the heaven, the fruits of the earth, the waters of the rivers, the seas, the herbs, and the plants of the field this year to bless them. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Praise them to their masters according to your grace. Give joy to the face of the earth. May its ferals be abundantly watered and its fruits be plentiful. Prepared for sowing and harvesting, manage our life as deemed fit. Bless the crown of the year with your goodness for the sake of the poor of your people, the widow, the orphan, the foster child, the traveler, the stranger, and for the sake of all of us who entreat you and seek your holy name. For the eyes of everyone wait upon you, for you give them their food in due season. Deal with us according to your goodness, O oh, you give food to all flesh, fill our hearts with joy and gladness, that we too have insufficiency in everything always may abound, in every good need. Lord have mercy. Brought to you these gifts, those on whose behalf they have been brought, and those by whom they have been brought. Give them all the heavenly reward. Pray for these holy and precious gifts our sacrifices and those who have brought them lord have mercy. as this o lord is the command of your only begotten son that we share in the commemoration of your saints graciously accord O lord to remember all the saints who have pleased you since the beginning our only fathers the patriarchs the prophets, the apostles, the preachers, the evangelists, the martyrs, the confessors, and all the spirits of the righteous, perfected in the faith, most of all, the pure, full of glory, ever virgin, only Theotokos, Saint Mary, who truly gave birth to God, the Lord, and Saint John, the forerunner, Baptist, and martyr, Saint Stephen, the archdeacon, and proto-martyr, the beholder of God, the evangelist, Saint Mark, the holy apostle, and Ma. Lord, the patriarch, Saint Severus, Saint Teacher, Discourse, Saint Athanasius, the Apostolic, Saint Peter, the Holy Martyr and High Priest, Saint John Chrysostom, Saint the Saint John Chrysostom, Saint Theodosius, Saint Theophilus, Saint Demetrius, Saint Cyril, Saint Basil, Saint Gregory, the Theologian, Saint Gregory, the Wonder Worker, Saint Gregory, the Armenian. The 318 assembled at Nice and the 150 at Constantinople and 200 at Ephesus. Our righteous Father, the great Abba Antony, the righteous Abba Paul, the three saints of a Macari and all their children, the cross bearers. Our Father of a John the Higam and our righteous Father of a Pishoy, the perfect man, the beloved. Of our good Savior, our Father of Apollo of Tamun, Ezekiel, his disciple, my Lord, the Roman Father, Saint Maximus, and the Medjus, the 49 martyrs, the elders of Shehit, strong Saint Abba, Moses, John Cam, the priest, our Father of Daniel, the Higaman, our Father of Asidor, the priest, our Father of Apachum, of the Kononian, Theodore, his disciple, our Father of Ashinuti, the Archman, Dryden, and Abawisa, his disciple, our Father of Pope Corollus, the Sixth, the man of prayer, and Habib Girgis, the 
archdeacon, our father Saint Bishoy Camel, the priest, our father Alba Yosu Antoni, our father Saint Marisa Theban, and our mother Saint Verena, the bride of Christ, and all the choir of your saints, through his prayers and supplications, have mercy on us all and save us for the sake of your holy name which is called upon those who read recite the names of all the fathers and patriarchs who have fallen asleep O oh Lord, repose their souls and forgive us our sins. May their holy blessing be with us. Amen. Glory to you. O Lord, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord bless No. 
not the death of the sinner, but rather that he returns and lives. Restore us, O God, to your salvation. Deal with us according to your goodness, O you who do more than we ask or understand. As it was and shall be from generation to generation and on to ages of the ages has loosed the enmity of mankind. All the only begotten God. Oh, 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 oh. 
sanctify Sanctify redemption from sin through his only begotten son Jesus Christ our Lord the life of everyone the help of those who flee to him the hope of those who cry out to him before whom thousands of thousands and ten thousand times ten thousands of all angels and archangels, the cherubim and the seraphim and all the innumerable host of the heavenly powers. <laughs> O oh God, who have sanctified these gifts which are set forth through the coming down upon them of your Holy Spirit, you have purified them. Purify us also, our Master, from our sins, the hidden and the manifest, and every thought not pleasing to your goodness, O oh God, the lover of mankind, may it be far from us. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. 
spirits, our hearts, our eyes, our understanding, our thoughts and our consciences, so that with a pure heart and enlightened soul and an ashamed countenance of faith unfeigned, a perfect love and a firm hope, we may dare with boldness without fear to pray to you, O God, the only Father who is in the heavens, and say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever and ever. In Christ Jesus our Lord. your hands to the Lord. Before Spirit in the fear of God, let us attend. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The holy is our for the holy. Blessed be the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. Sanctification is by the Holy Spirit. Amen. One is your holy Father. One is your holy Son. One is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with all. And with your spirit. The holy body and the precious true blood of Jesus Christ. Son of our God, Amen. 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 Precious body and the true blood of Jesus Christ, Son of our God, Amen. blood of Emmanuel our God. This is true oh, Amen. 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 I believe. I believe. I believe and confess to the last breath that this is the life-giving flesh, that your only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ, took from our Lady, the Lady of us all, the Holy Theotokos, Saint Mary. He made it one with His divinity, without mingling, without confusion, and without alteration. He... 
made the good confession before Pontius Pilate. He gave it up for us upon the holy wood of the cross of his own will for us all. Truly I believe that his divinity parted not from his humanity for a single moment nor a twinkling of an eye, given for us for salvation, remission of sins, and eternal life to those who partake of him. I believe that this is true. Oh, amen. Amen, amen, amen. I believe, I believe, I believe that this is true. Amen. Pray for us and for all Christians who said to us concerning them, Remember us in the house of the Lord. Oh, Lord, the peace and love of Jesus be with you. Sing hallelujah. Pray for the worthy partaken of the immaculate, heavenly, and holy mysteries. Lord, have mercy. My Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ, treasure of mercy and spring of salvation, I come to you confessing my sins. I confess that with boldness I... O Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under the roof of my house, for I am sinful. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Say unto my soul, your sins are forgiven. I am barren in need of your righteousness, your compassion, your mercy, and your love. You humbled yourself and descended from the heavens in unutterable glory to our lowly state, and accepted to be born in a manger. O Holy Savior, do not reject my humble and miserable soul, which is waiting for your glorified coming but accept to come into my soul to cleanse it. As you do not refuse to enter into the leper's house to heal him, please, O Lord, enter into my soul and heal me. Do not forbid me from receiving your holy body and your precious blood, as you do not forbid the woman who is a sinner from kissing your feet. May my communion with you banish every defilement and mortify my evil desires. Help me to obey your life-giving commandments and heal my soul and body from all sins that I may accept your gifts. May your grace dwell in me, and may your spirit abide in me, and make me united with you, that I may live for the glory of your holy name. Amen. The holy is our for the holy is blessed be the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. Sanctification is by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The holy body in the precious true blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of our God. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Oh.
Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner, Lord Jesus Christ, 
Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I am the Lord that ye I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. In thee, O Lord, I put my trust. In thee, O Lord, I put my trust in Thee, O Lord, I put my trust. This is my prayer in the desert When all that's within me feels dry This is my prayer in my hunger and need My God is the God who provides This is my prayer in the fire In weakness or trial or pain there is a faith proved a more worth than gold, so refine me, Lord, through the flame. I will bring praise, I will bring praise, no weapons formed against me shall remain. I will rejoice, I will declare, God is my victory and he is here. This is my prayer in the battle. When triumph is still on its way, I am a conqueror and co heir with Christ, so firm on his promise I'll stand. I will bring praise, I will bring praise, no weapons formed against me shall be made. I will rejoice, I will declare, God is my victory and he is here. All of my life, in every season, you are still God. I have a reason to sing. I have a reason to worship. All of my life, in every season, you are still God. I have a reason to sing. I have a reason to worship. I will bring praise, I will bring praise, no weapon formed against me shall remain. I will rejoice, I will declare, God is my victory and he is here. This is my prayer in the harvest, when favor and providence flow. I know I feel to be emptied again. The seed I received, I will sow. <laughs> 
because of who I am, but because of what you've done, not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, here today and gone tomorrow, a wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind still you hear me when i'm calling lord you catch me when i'm falling and you've told me who i am i am yours i am yours i am strength and I am weak when I look the treasure that I see you are my holy no taking you as a precious jewel Lord to give up I'd be a fool you are my all in all Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Take in my sin my cross my shame rising again i bless your name you are my all in all when i fall down you pick me up when i am dry you fill my cup you are my all in all Lamb of God, worthy is your name, Jesus. Lamb of God, worthy is your This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. All I have within me, I give you. is in 
Every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul. I live for you alone, every breath that I take. Every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way. compassion of us never failing a mercy fall on me everyone needs forgiveness the kindness of a savior the hope of nation savior he can move the mountain my God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me, all my fears and failures. Fill my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Blessed be God, the Father, the Pantocrator. Amen. Amen. Blessed be, Son, Jesus Christ, Lord. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Amen. O angel of the sacrifice, flying up to the highest with this hymn, remember us before the Lord that he may forgive us our sins. Let us praise with the angels saying, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, and goodwill towards men. You may be seated just for a second. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you all this morning. We first want to thank our dear father, Father Krolos, for coming to help with communion. We know how busy Sundays are, uh, but uh, out of his love for us, he comes to help us in times of need always. So uh, God bless your priest, Sarabuna. Thank you so much for, for coming and spending this time with us. Um, I want to share with you actually just... Uh, I, I smile every once in a while, or actually pretty often on the altar, when I see a, a few prayers that come to us from, especially our children, I'm, assu I'm assuming these are children, because of the handwriting, so, um, but they're always wonderful, and I learn so much from, from our children, and especially the way that they pray, because they pray very simply, and I think, Blake, this morning we we're speaking about how we need to accept our faith simply, and we have to sometimes just come to God and have simple prayers. These children truly, um, today, were, were kind of teaching me a lesson on what we can pray for, uh, and there's no limits to God's prayers or what we could offer to prayer. So one child says, please, God, help my mom and dad, let them be happy at all times, and don't let me eat my nails. So... Do you see, like, the, the, the extremities, obviously, they, they care about their parents so much. 
One child actually sends says, thank you God for letting us return safely to Canada. I guess they were on a trip. Let me be the best basketball player in the NBA history. Like it's not, there's no limits. Again, there's no limits to these prayers, which is uh, truly amazing. So I just want to encourage us. God truly hears our prayers uh, and that we shouldn't put a limit on the prayers. As we saw this morning from the feeding of the 5,000, that truly nothing is impossible for God. That with the little that we offer him, that he may bless and that he may fill the, the 5,000 and so forth. So whatever impossibilities we may have and whatever simple prayer we may have that we want to offer to God, please offer it. Don't ever say to yourself, well, this is a silly prayer or this is a prayer that God doesn't need to hear. No, it's okay that God wants to hear all our prayers as you saw and God uh, answer the prayers of these children as well. Um, this week, there's no en route, so just a couple of announcements. No en route meeting this week, so enjoy your, your long weekend. So hopefully everyone's enjoying your long, the long weekend up to now. Also, we're asking for prayers. There is a university convention that's happening currently. It finishes tomorrow, so please pray for that. And that there's a benefit to all the children, or all the youth, I should say, that are attending uh, that that convention and also we pray that everyone that is traveling this weekend that they come back and they return uh, safely um, next week uh, we are excited to announce that there we will have a visit from his grace bishop joseph his grace bishop joseph is a uh, a bishop from africa he's the general bishop of africa uh, he serves uh, I believe in Zimbabwe and other areas of that area. So he will be coming, God willing, here uh, at SMSV. He will be here on Friday night with the youth, but there will be a Vespers, a St. Mary's Vespers, a, a Revival Vespers uh, that will start. And that will be our first one, actually, for the Revival will be on the 11th of August. It starts at... Uh, 8.30, so the Vespers will be from 8.30 to about 9.30 with veneration, and then His Grace will share a word with the youth and whoever wants to say, this is open to everyone, so you're more than welcome to, to come. And then on August 12th, God willing, He will pray uh, the liturgy with us on Saturday morning here. Um, also, uh, we've just released our schedule for the St. Mary's Revival. We uh, here at SMSV will start at on Friday and go every day from there, uh, Friday the 11th. Uh, but also all the other churches in the area have also, uh, you know, they have a schedule and we know that uh, there's something every single day in one of the churches in the area. So I encourage you in this time, St. Mary's Fast, which starts tomorrow, is, uh, yeah, starts tomorrow, um, uh, is one of those fasts that everybody uh, fast and everybody loves and has a dear place for St. Mary in their heart. So please uh, take this time as a revival that you could attend uh, any churches and any of the Vespers and Venerations and uh, sermons that will be uh, given in all our sister churches around. Um, next week, God willing, so as I mentioned, we have... Um, We'll have a liturgy. There's no liturgy on Wednesday, so there's no uh, summer camp liturgy, but there is a liturgy on Thursday, the 10th, and then His Grace will come to us for uh, Saturday. He'll come for a Vespers. Uh, sorry, Friday he'll come for a Vespers, and then Saturday morning we have our regular liturgy with uh, His Grace Bishop Yusuf being present, and then Sunday and so forth. Uh, also, the drama team... Uh, sorry... They sent me an announcement. So they have a rehearsal or they have a practice today uh, just uh, from noon, I believe. So please see Tantehedi downstairs uh, if you're a part of this group that you want to uh, and, and join the practice and so forth. We ask you for your continual prayers for the summer camp. We're down to week number six out of eight. So there's week six is next week and weeks, no, 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 week seven is, what is next week? Anyways, there's two weeks left. <laughs> That's what's left for the summer camp. Uh, so pray for the servants and pray for the children. It's been a wonderful time. We ask you to also pray for the ministries of all our churches. God bless you.
Amen, Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of the ages. Amen. We proclaim and say, O our Lord Jesus Christ, bless the air of heaven, bless the waters of the rivers, bless the seeds and the herbs. May your mercy and peace be a fortress unto your people. Save us and have mercy on us. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord, bless us. Amen. Bless me. Bless me. Lord, repentance, forgive me. Say the blessing. O Christ our God. Amen. So be it. O King of peace, grant us your peace. Establish for us your peace and forgive us our sins. For thine is the power, the glory, the might forever. Amen. Our Lord, make us worthy to pray thankfully. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now the love of God, the Father, the grace of his only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, gift and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace, the peace of the Lord be with you.